What's up guys, thanks for tuning in to my channel and thanks for subscribing. Tonight's topic, I'm going to make it real quick. I'm going to try not to go into too much medical detail, but let's, let's, uh, let's jump right in. We're going to start addressing some knee pain. Someone's been asking me about knee pain issues, all right? So first, let's establish two common injuries, whether in soft tissue, bone breaks are one thing, but let's just talk about what a sprain is and what a strain is, okay? When someone says, I sprained something, you know, it's easy to think about the ankle, a sprained ankle. A sprain technically means it's involving um, ligaments, okay? Ligaments tend to be stabilizers. Ligaments connect bone to bone. So when someone pops an ankle, that's usually ligament issues. Um, if you strain something, that's usually referring to muscle. Um, muscle and tendon, some tendon issues, okay? So how you address those can somewhat be very different, right? Either way, when an injury first occurs, you have to um, realize that it's in an acute state, which means it's in, an, it's in a state of inflammation, which means blood flow is flooding to the area, there's swelling, there might be bruising, there's obviously pain. Um, all of this though, as shitty as it feels, this is a good thing. I know it sounds weird, but for the first 24 hours, you're in your the acute phase, maybe 48 hours, that's a benefit to what's injured. The reason our body floods blood to the area is blood carries nutrients. Nutrients will heal the area, okay? So let's talk about knee pain. Let's talk about the anatomy of the knee. I don't mean to stand up here on, the, on here. So let's look at my knee. There you go. Let's talk about um, ligaments. So on the outside of my knee is what they call the LCL, the lateral collateral ligament. The medial side, the medial collateral ligament. Two ligaments that crisscross inside. The ACL, which helps keep my shin from pretty much popping off my, my femur. And your PCL, this is all internal, which keeps the knee again from popping backwards. So, if you just got knee barred, let's say you were at a competition or you trained too hard, someone even fell on your leg, falling can be a little different, especially if they fell sideways. But either way, if your knee got hyperextended, most likely you probably strained the hamstring, you probably put some stress on the ACL, if, not, if it was real bad, you might have torn the ACL, you might have a partial tear, there's a difference between partial and full thickness. Full thickness, that shit's just completely ripped. Partial, small tear. Um, and you're going to have some pain. So let's, 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 and then there's your meniscus, which is inside the knee, which sits in between the two bones, like a cushion shock absorber pad. That keeps um, things nice and lubricated. You might have done some damage to that. So common injuries to the knee, right? If you take a blow to the side, or let's say you knee cut. I just recently knee cut someone so hard that they held my ankle that when I did, I actually reaped and twisted my own knee. And I, what I did is I tore my meniscus, I strained my MCL because I rotated my tibia right off my femur, and I probably strained my ACL. So the problem here is um, all those um, ligaments that I just named off to you, their key job is to help stabilize my knee. So now I have stability issues in my knee. So if you just tore your meniscus, you can kind of deal with that. You're gonna know because there's gonna be some swelling. You're gonna be able to have, you're gonna have limited range of motion. Usually it's in flexion. You're not gonna be able to bend your knee all the way. Or when you try to kneel down, it feels really uncomfortable. Um, extension usually is not too much of a problem, like straightening your knee. You might just feel stiff at those final degrees, right? So something like that, how are we going to treat it? Well, you can go the old school route called RICE, rest, ice, compression, elevation. That's usually, you can't go wrong. You know, here's what I'm going to say. Let that inflammation kick in for the first 24 hours because it's trying to help you. So I know it's, it, you'll feel right away like shit, take some ibuprofen. You could, right? But the inflammation's there for your own good. Just like when we have a fever when we're sick, a lot of times we want to stop that fever. 
Well, that fever is really trying to stop the infection. It's trying to kill the infection, right? So the same thing with our body when it's in an inflamed state. Do we want this to carry on for more than 24 hours? That Probably not. It's doing its job. Now the job's done. Shut it off, okay? So let me just tell you a key, um, a key detail. If you have a muscle... Um, if you have a muscle strain, right, sometimes we feel something pull, we're like, fuck, 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 fuck. You know you felt your hamstring pop, you felt something in the calf pop, maybe you popped even your quad, right, so this is all related to the knee. You feel like, okay, I'm going to go home tonight, I'm going to ice it, and I'm going to stretch it. Ice is fine because it'll help numb some of the pain out. It is going to cut down on the inflammation, but you don't want to stretch it right away. You probably shouldn't stretch it just to be safe. I know this sounds crazy, but probably don't stretch it for three days. What you should be doing is working your active range of motion to your comfort level. So active range of motion basically means straighten the knee, bend the knee, do little mini squats against the wall. So you're doing gentle movements that you can tolerate. Don't push past pain because see the difference between um, a sprain and a strain, when we're referring to muscle, muscle are fibers like a cable that it just got ripped. So what's going to happen is blood's going to flood to the area through the inflammation process and then what's going to happen is it needs to mend back together, right? But if you immediately start stretching, you have something like this. It's trying to go here. You stretched. You stretched. You're prolonging the healing process. It'll eventually heal, but there might be some scarring involved. There's going to be scarring either way. That's just how it's going to heal. But um, so that's a big difference there. Um, with it, when it comes to a ligament and it comes to a muscle. Obviously, the difference here, muscle needs strengthening. How do you strengthen your ligaments? That's where I would challenge you and say, stick to your basic closed chain exercises. I'm not going to go into detail with this. So if you hurt your knee, contact me and we'll talk it out. Or look up closed chain exercise for general knee pain, mini squats, leg press machines, straight leg raises, stuff like that. Basically, where the knee's in a safe position. That's what you want. Um, but this might be something you have to contact me so we can talk more in detail, and I'm fine with that. Um, again, ligament issues like an ACL, an MCL, an LCL, all these fa fancy L's, those are your stabilizers. So you need to address them like a stabilizer. So when you can appropriately start exercising, right, I would look into stability exercises, stuff that challenge your base, your balance. You can use like the Enzo board, like a balance board. Um, if you paddle board, Practice paddleboarding, anything that challenges your stability. At first, it might be uncomfortable, so do what's tolerated. Make sure you keep your abs tight. That's going to help you with uh, stabilization. Um, but uh, the thing is, I could probably go really, really deep into this. So you, I, I know I talk about comments, and nobody likes to comment, and that's fine. But this is one of those topics where you just got to reach out to me, especially if you're suffering and you don't know what to do. Reach out to me, and I'll give you a basic protocol. Because I'm telling you right now, you go to physical therapy... They're going to ice it, they're going to do quad sets, and they're going to stretch it. The problem is sometimes we stretch things without realizing how much damage we're doing. Sometimes we start, someone might come in with an, a, a serious knee sprain. Okay, so the ligaments are involved. And we start doing exercises right away because we want to focus on your range of motion. Well, we're helping it, but we're hurting at the same time because it's, it's, and you know, people are going to disagree with me, and there might be other therapists that do, but fuck you because I've taken it into actual practical use. I've used it on myself. So fuck what you know in school and fuck what you learn in your books because all that shit goes out the window. And anybody that has some respect for themselves realizes that what you learn in school, in almost any field, you get out to the real world and it's like, fuck, it's totally not like this at all. So there you go. You just got a real taste of me right there. Because I know there's going to be some hypocrites that are going to fuck. No, 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 that's not, no, no, fuck you. Okay, because I've been there. I've been through all these fucking type of pains. So fuck you. Okay? I think we got through to those people. Um, so yeah, just reach out to me. Um, because there are plenty of exercises. And there's plenty of useless exercises. When I say useless exercises, it's great for the asshole that has to get back to work just so he can sit at his desk and, and type all day long. Well, fuck, he doesn't really need much. And he probably lives a sedentary life anyway. You need a lot more attention. You need to restore the, the full mechanics. You need to also walk before you try to run. That's important because you want to prolong your history in jiu-jitsu. You don't want to stop training, right? Let's talk real quick, and then I'm going to shut this off, and then you guys reach out to me. Um, so you have an injured knee. Do we stop training? Maybe for that one day, take the day off. It's, it's up to you. If, you know, whatever. You, if you're addicted like I am, 
Um, I don't train that as often as some of you addicts that train every day or twice a day. I mean, I'm old for that shit. But types of braces you can use, okay? If it's a muscle strain, right, one of those neoprene sleeve compression sleeves is fine. If it's a meniscus tear, a neoprene sleeve compression, just that added pressure will feel fine. Even if it's like a wrestler's um, a knee, knee pad, that works fine too. It just gives you a little extra support. If we're talking ACL, we're talking LCO, one of the actual real ligaments that prevent the... So if an ACL is torn, you're going to have slippage like this. Same with the PCL. The MCL, you're going to have slippage going this way. The LCL, you're going to have slippage going this way. You'll know the difference because you'll feel that shit slipping when you're, when you're being active. Or when someone grabs your knee to pass you real quick, you're going to feel, boom, like, ooh, because I feel that. So a brace that works well for that, I would say, is more of a hinge brace. The kind of brace you see that have the metal hinges going through them. Now, they make braces like that that are painful for your training partners because the metal's so big. But they do make braces now that are more for the athlete, which I have myself. It's a McDavid brace, um, and I would highly recommend it. It has just two little thin metal rods, just enough. It's not on a lever or anything like that. It's just there to give me an extra support. It's just to prevent my knee from pop, 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 because right now my MCL is torn, so that shit will pop right off. Um, so it keeps me in place. Braces are not something you want to wear 24-7. Even I know even if it hurts, you just don't want to wear it 24-7. The compression, you can kind of, like a neoprene sleeve, you can kind, but even then I'd say no. And the reason is, if I wear a brace that helps increase my stability, the brace is stabilizing me. My body's not stabilizing me. It's just like, hypothetically, if I take testosterone, my body's going to shut down testosterone production because there's testosterone already coming in, it doesn't need it. So our body works that way. If you say, nah, I got this brace, it's going to stabilize, your body says, cool, fuck it, I don't need to do it anymore. So when you take the brace off, you're really unstable. So I don't recommend wearing a brace 24-7, but if you're going to train, definitely wear the brace, especially if you got ACL issues, you got MCL issues, you got hardcore meniscus tears, because it's just going to be painful, it's just going to swell, it's going to hold you back. When the time comes, focus on stretching your quads, focus on stretching your hamstrings. If it's a muscle, uh, I know I'm going fast, if it's a muscle um, strain, first give it at least three days to start letting some, some healing process go in, and when you stretch, stretch comfortably. Don't really try to go for that hardcore stretch. You're just trying to focus on getting your range of motion back so you can get healthy and you can get back on the mat. All right, guys, I'm going to wrap it up because I don't want to talk too long tonight. Um, and again, you got to hit me up, man. I can give you some great exercises to at least keep you functional. Um, but it's just it's too much to go into detail here. We'd be, we would have to probably talk personally for an hour. All right, guys, take care.